Hey, Maxi with Breakfree Ministries. Um, I'm going to read from Isaiah 14, uh, verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning. You have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroy the nations of the world. The New King James Version has said, you who weaken the nations. God is referring to Lucifer, to Satan, who was once a, a God's angel and the most beautiful, a cherubim, a shining star, son of the morning. God made him beautiful to bring worship to God himself. Yet he rebelled against God with iniquity, wickedness. Pride was found in his heart and God cast him down and there was no place in heaven for him any longer. Now Satan that lives on this earth, he's a spiritual being, he's in charge of blinding the minds, the eyes, the heart, the soul of the unbelievers. So that is so hard in the beginning when you are told that Jesus is the Lord, that Jesus died on the cross for you, and the blood is the only cleansing agent for your sins. That's why it is so hard for people in the beginning, when they're not saved, to understand the glory of Christ, the work of Jesus on the cross, and the power of the resurrection. So, this morning, before I woke up to do my early duties, um, of prayer, I was told in a dream a very strong word, and the word is curtail, C-U-R-T-A-I-L. It means to cut back, to shorten, to diminish, to shrink, in, to reduce. So the word came in a sentence, the one who blinds the minds of the people, curtails the nations. And there was a strong emphasis on the word curtail. And I looked it up in the dictionary, and that's what it means, to impose a restriction. In this case, in Isaiah 14, 12, how you have destroyed the nations, how you have weakened the nations. That is what God is referring to. He wants this truth revealed, come out into the light. What is happening here in the United States and all the nations is the weakening of all nations. You see the economy shrink. The political leaders have been blinded by the God of this world. And we find that in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. And I'll read it from the Varian Study Bible. The 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The God of this age, or the God of this world, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Hallelujah. It's like God does a miracle in bringing somebody from darkness, extracting them from this world's ways to see the way that Christ sees, how Christ operates, how Christ wants his children to live on the earth. That's a miracle. And that's why we pray for people to be saved from the final judgment to come. Because Jesus is coming again soon. And he, as a judge of the earth, and perfect, holy, righteous God, is holy and has to judge according to his absolutes, according to his law. So, it doesn't matter if you're a good person or consider yourself to be a good person. That, that has nothing to do with the law of salvation. Only Jesus, and it's by faith that someone is redeemed, reconciled to God. By faith, we understand the heavens and the earth were created. And everything that we see, visible and invisible, we understand that God framed it for his purpose. So equally, when we are told about Jesus, by faith, we believe that he is God. He is the son of God, sent to the cross and resurrected after three days so that we could have a new life, a new beginning in the spirit. See, flesh and bone cannot do what the spirit of God does. The two conflict each other. They're in constant friction with each other. The Spirit of God will have a person come out of darkness, come out of this world, come out of sin, come out of Egypt, and give up his life 
that they once thought they could be successful in and say, God, I surrender it to you. I understand I am a sinner. I've wronged so many people, including myself, and I've let you down as my father. And when that person has a heart change because he's convicted by the Spirit of God, not by anything else, because God says it in the Bible that it's God's goodness that leads men to repentance. So it's a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. The mercies of God coming upon the soul of man to bring back the light, to bring back a new birth. That's the beginning of knowing the Lord. And from there on, you serve him. Whatever he says and chooses, that's the, God's best for you. And you accept that and you move on with it. And you learn the ways of Christ. He completely changes you from the inside out. So I wanted to talk about that word curtail because here in the United States, you have seen the decadence that took place since 2001, the tower collapse, because of the sin of this nation. One called abortion, it's murder. We pay attention to other matters, but to kill babies, we sweep it under the rug in this nation. And God is beyond displeased with this. He has to judge that sin. So he's saying, repent, America. Do not go with the ways of Babylon. Come out from them. Come out from unbelievers. Come out from Egypt. Come out from Babylon because their judgment is secure. God cannot reverse that judgment. Only to those who find God's mercy and are extracted from it. So... What is happening here in the United States, you have seen the political leaders that are serving Satan. They're not serving their party. You must know that since ancient times, every city had leaders that serve a deity. They had a God, and they had their belief, they had their faith in a God. Every city had a deity, and they lived according to their belief. We call it morals, values. Okay. So Christians is the church of God on the earth. So political leaders that are not serving Christ will serve Babylon. They'll impose laws on the whole nation that will defile it. It will contaminate the land. It will pollute it, such as murder is abortion in this nation. We don't pay attention to the screaming babies in the womb. We pay attention to other things that don't matter as much as this one. So that curtails a nation, shrinks it, diminishes, destroys it, weakens it. Sin destroys a nation. So I want you to know, if you are not saved, the only way to be reconciled, that your soul will never hit the rock bottom of the bed of maggots in hell, is that you are made right with God. Now that you are alive, you come to Jesus. That's what he wants. He wants you to turn 180 and you turn and come to him. So you escape the things to come. Let it be a blessing to you this day.